Hey students, welcome to Unit 4. Unit 4 is where we get into moles, but first we've got to start by reviewing. So that's what this video is. So we're going to start with 4-1, and this is formulas. Remember, or just kind of as a quick review, or for some of us that are new, remember when we watch the videos, we take the notes on the right-hand side of the video, and we're going to title it 4-1, and this is formulas. If you're keeping track, this is page 24, just trying to continue with uh, your notebook. So it's kind of all in a linear spot. But if you want to start over and make this page one, that's totally fine. So our first step is to review formulas. Remember, uh, this is stuff we learned in first semester. So hopefully it'll come back to us fairly quickly. So jumping right in, you will, before we get started, remember you will need your periodic table for this. <clears throat> If you don't have a periodic table, you could always look one up on the internet for right now and then grab one when you come to class the next time. All right, so let's jump right in here. Um, this title of this unit is moles and we're going to review writing and naming compounds. So how do we identify them is our first step. And since that's our first step, the biggest key is all that coloring we did on our periodic table um, is now useful for us because how we colored it, and this is our first element. Our first element tells us what type of compound we have. So all we have to do is look at the first element and it's going to identify whether it is type one ionic, type two ionic, or covalent. So let's quickly kind of go through those rules, but we're going to like quickly go through them. So we're not going to rewrite everything down because hopefully it is uh, still kind of fresh in our brains. So for type one ionic, those on my periodic table are green, but they're the ones kind of like group one, group two, group three, a little bit of group 13. All right. So how we name these, remember we write the cation name. Then we do the root of the anion and then we add ide to it. All right, remember we add ide. All right, and we'll do an example down below. So hopefully that makes sense. This is kind of the simplest version. All right, um, this is the first version and then all the others like type two and covalent build off of that. When we write formulas for type one, all we have to do is we write their charges all right, we have charges, and then we crisscross and reduce. Hopefully you remember this part. And remember those charges, that was not reduce. All right. Remember those charges can be found um, above the groups on our periodic table, or they can be found in that table up above. All right. Now, as we jump into type two ionic, this is where it gets a little tougher. They are still ionic. Um, so we still do the cation, but these are the ones that have Roman numerals. And so we have to figure out the charge of the cation. Find charge of cation. Okay. And just to review our Roman numerals, put a little table in here. I think I can hopefully make one fit. Oh, look at that. All right. Put this line down the middle, hopefully. Oh, it didn't like it. Okay, so for one, that's the I. For two, we have II. For three, we have III. For four, remember it's IV. For five, we have V. Six, VI. Seven, VII. Not that we'll ever get here, but just in case. Eight, we'll go with V-I-I-I, -I -I. okay? So those are our Roman numerals. And so we have to find our charge of our cation. And again, we'll get practice on this in just a couple of seconds. So j moving on to our formula, since it's still ionic, we're gonna crisscross and reduce, right? This is still what we do. So we're gonna crisscross and reduce, all right? Now for our covalent, this is our one that has prefixes. So we're going to use prefixes here. Looks like my naming didn't come up there. So let's change that real quick. So A here should be naming. I apologize for that. Try to fix that before I put it out on the web for you. 
All right, so our naming, um, we're going to use prefixes. And remember, no mono on the first one. Okay, so draw us a table. Hope this, maybe this table will be a little better than our last one. Maybe. Let's make this just a touch bigger there. All right, and maybe my line will work this time. Hey, look at that. All right, so one, we've got mono. Two is die. Three is try. Four is tetra. Five is penta. Six is hepta. Seven is hexa. Eight is octa. Ooh, nine is nona. Looks like I need to add on to this. And 10 is deca. Okay, so those are our prefixes. And then for our formulas, we literally just write what it says. Using the prefixes as our guide. Okay, so let's see if we can't figure out how to name these. Remember, our first step is always, always, always to check that first element. So we're naming, all right, and so we're going to look, we always look at our first element. So we look at CA. We find CA on our periodic table. Mm, there it is. It's type 1. So we know that this one is type 1. So we name using our uh, type 1 rules. So we have the name of the cation. So cal CA is calcium. So we're going to write calcium. Now this last thing, ClO3, is a polyatomic ion. And it's going to be found at the top of your periodic table. And ClO3 is chlorate. So we just say, since it's type 1, we literally just say calcium chlorate. Okay? Calcium chlorate. Awesome. Let's move to the next one. So again, the first thing we do is we look at our first element. We have Cu. All right, so we find Cu on the periodic table. Mine is colored purple, so that means it's type 2. All right, so type 2 means we have a Roman numeral in it, so we have to figure out the charge of copper. And remember how we do this is in this formula we have 1 Cu and 3 OHs. If each OH is negative 1, that gives us like negative 3 overall. Add up negative 1 plus negative 1 plus negative 1. And then that gives us copper has to be plus 3. So we're going to say copper. And then its charge is 3. So we're going to use our Roman numeral 3. And then OH again is one of those guys at the top. And it is hydroxide. So copper 3 hydroxide. Awesome. Now let's look at the last one. So again, we look at C. We find C. Ooh, mine's pink. So that means covalent. This is where I use prefixes. So this one is covalent. And I need prefixes here then. This one needed a Roman numeral, right? Okay. So remember, we don't use mono on the first one. So we're going to say carbon. And then we have four Fs, so we would say tetra fluoride. Carbon tetra fluoride. Awesome. Now, writing formulas is really pretty simple. We just we don't have to know really whether it's type one, type two, or covalent, because the name kind of gives it away. If we have a Roman numeral, we know it's type two. If we have prefixes, we know it's covalent. So let's look at that. This is where the type 1 and the type 2, we do our crisscross. So we've got beryllium sulfate. Okay. So we've got beryllium, which is BE. We write our charge above it. BE is plus 2. Sulfate is one of our polyatomic ions. So we're going to write SO4. And its charge is minus 2. All right. And remember, with our ionic ones, we do our crisscross and reduce. So this 2 goes down. This 2 goes down. So now we have Be2, parentheses, SO4, parentheses, 2. But reduce, so we can take out those 2s, leaving us with BeSO4. That's the name of our compound. 
Okay. Awesome. Let's try the next one. We've got lead to oxide. So in this case, we know it's uh, type 2, but it just makes it easy for us. We don't have to look up the charge of lead because this tells us lead is plus 2. So we're going to write plus 2 above lead. And then we have oxygen, our oxide, which is oxygen. So we look on our periodic table. O is negative 2. So again, we do our crisscross and reduce. 2. 2. So we get PB2O2. And all we have to do is reduce out those 2s. And we're left with PBO. All right. And our last one here, hopefully, is covalent since we've done all the others. And we have phosphorus pentachloride. So phosphorus is P. Chloride is Cl. And we have five of them. So we're going to say PCl5. I hope this is a good refresher. See you next time.